For the last five weeks, we have witnessed the life cycle of a sea fern. Through our observations of wild type and mutant plates, we were able to see the changes in our plants from day to day. What are the main physical features of male and hermaphrodite sexes? Both the male and hermaphrodites have rhizoids. Males are smaller than hermaphrodites. They contain antheridium and closely resemble tongues. The hermaphrodites have archegonium and are much larger. The hermaphrodites somewhat resemble boxing gloves. Is the sporophyte haploid or diploid? The single-celled zygote divides by mitosis and develops into a multicellular sporophyte. The sporophyte then becomes diploid. Diploid means that the cells contain two full sets of chromosomes. We know that sporophyte are diploid because they were formed from the sexual reproduction of the gametophytes. Are the gametophytes haploid or diploid? The gametophytes are haploid. Haploid means that the cells contain one full set of chromosomes. We know that the gametophytes are haploid because they were formed from spores which are created through meiosis. Thus, there is only one set of chromosomes. What is the alternation of generations? The alternation of generations occurs in plants. It is a process by which the sea ferns alternate between haploid and diploid every other generation. The haploid generation produces gametes, which are known as gametophytes, while the diploid generation produces spores, known as sporophytes. Throughout the life of the sea fern, these two states will alternate, with the sporophytes taking up the majority of the plant's life. Now that we have discussed the alteration of generations, let's view the sea fern life cycle that we observed. For this experiment, male gametophytes were extracted from the agar plates and placed onto a depression slide submerged in sperm release buffer. This video shows the sperm being released from the male gametophyte. After the sperm were released, we added chemicals dubbed chemical A and chemical B into the sperm release buffer to see how the sperm would react. This allowed us to visualize chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the movement of organisms in response to a change in a chemical gradient. They can either respond positively or negatively to the chemical gradient. In the case of the sea fern, the sperm responded positively to the chemical and all converged at the site where the chemicals were released. It is clear from these videos that chemical A produced a greater reaction. The purpose of this experiment was to model the natural sequence of fertilization events that occur upon adding water to a culture. Compare and contrast the need for water in sea ferns and in pine trees. When plants transitioned from water to land, plants including mosses, ferns, and pines had to obtain resources from both the soil and the air. These above ground plants are covered by a waxy cuticle that prevents water loss. Both the fern and the pine tree use vascular tissue, a network of thick walled cells joined into narrow tubes that extend throughout the plant body. The vascular tissue allow the plants to conduct water and minerals up from the soil and distribute these nutrients throughout its body. The need for water in sea ferns and pine trees differs when it comes to reproduction. For the sea fern, water is necessary for the fertilization process. The egg can only be fertilized by the sperm that swims through a film of water. For the pine tree, 
fertilization does not require moisture. This is because pines have pollen grains, which are structures that contain the sperm producing cells. The pollen grains are carried to the egg by wind or animals and moisture is not required.